Hello there everyone, this is Wayback Tech, and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at that mystery board that I fixed in the last video. So, just what is this mystery board from the last video? Well, Gamer1990 used his Columbo-like research skills to figure out exactly what this board actually is. The motherboard in question is a dual socket board featuring socket 3 and 4 on the exact same board. This board apparently was made by Acer, and they call it the V17, Though a lot of Opti-based motherboards from this era have a very similar look to them, so I don't really think that Acer actually manufactured this board. After repairing the one broken trace and finding the board did in fact come back to life, I decided to touch up the other two traces that were affected by corrosion. I'll do a bit more tidying up of the repaired areas later, but for now the board's working fine as it is, and so I'm not in a big hurry to do that. I have four more of this exact board that I picked up well over a year ago now that I had hoped to fix, but they were all missing their BIOS chips as well as their external cache. The level of trace damage under the battery is quite severe. I soaked these boards for several hours in a hot vinegar bath to remove the battery acid, and the acid-eaten portions of the traces were dissolved away as well, leaving huge gaps in the traces, and the grooves left behind where the traces were embedded into. At some point I may try to fix these boards again, but it would be a lot of work and I'm not sure it's really worth it. For this video I am running the Cardex Tsang ET4000 W32P graphics card, which I have discovered is a bit faster than my other ET4000 card that's made by STB. I think the increase in speed of this card actually comes from the DRAM modules itself. If I'm not mistaken, I think these DRAM modules are 45 nanoseconds, if I'm reading that number correctly. As opposed to the 70 nanosecond DRAMs that are on this STB Lightspeed card. And there's also 2 meg of RAM on this card as well. But I think the increased speed on the other card is why that card scores a little bit faster in all the benchmarks. But that's just kind of a theory. I'm not really sure what else would be causing the increase in speed. The IDE controller is provided by this Super IDE ISA controller, which uses standard fast page mode memory to cache data from the hard drive when it is accessed, which does provide a bit of a boost in performance as things like DOS startup and drivers are cached into the memory on this card and remain there even during a reboot. Possibly the early and albeit primitive beginnings of modern SSD. The microcontroller on this card is an Intel 8186 12 megahertz chip. This is somewhere in between the 8086 and the 286 processor. In fact, it looks very similar to the 286 processors as well. At least the one style of them anyway. And I believe this card's running 512 uh, K of cache memory for the the IDE buffer Super IDE controller works really good actually and it does seem to cache some stuff at least the uh, startup stuff anyway I've noticed it caches and it seems to cache some of the testing routines as well with the config uh, benchmarking suite on the performance side of things this board is very hit or miss some benchmarks are closer to a 4666 or an 80, while others are closer to a 586 running at 133 or just a little bit under those of the Pentium 60 chip on the Mercury platform. I suspect the memory speed may be playing a role in the odd performance of this board. I think one of my early suspicions about this motherboard has been confirmed. that The uh, board actually has a 32-bit memory controller instead of 64-bit. This board with the Pentium processor does, in fact, run with only a single stick of RAM. The memory throughput is only 40 megabytes, indicating that it's not a particularly fast controller, and it's probably very likely to be running in 32-bit operation anyway, given the speed and, well, the fact that it only runs with one stick. Each 72-pin stick is 32-bit. On a Pentium, you have to run at least two sticks to get your full 64-bit uh, memory bus and it will not run with one memory stick so you have to have two in there but this board doesn't care one two three or four it's pretty much fine with 
I don't I haven't tried the board with 30 pin and 72 pin but four 30 pin also equal a 32 bit so in theory should be able to do that but I haven't tried it yet Let's take a look at the BIOS real quick here on this motherboard. <clears throat> Some nice options in here. The regular hard drive and stuff like that. Nothing particularly special. I've seen that before, I'm sure. Again, pretty average in here. But uh, we got some nice options in the advanced area, though. Advanced options for cache and memory, things like that. Uh, I find some games don't seem to work when I set this down to 3111. So I have to play with that a little bit. The um, external cache also does not seem to work with right back. Maybe it has something to do with how many sticks of memory they're actually using to get up to 512k of cache. I'm not really sure. I've tried slowing the memory timings down all the way and it didn't seem to make a difference. So right through is all we can do on this motherboard, at least for right now. Might try lowering it down to 256k of cache and see if that solves that problem. I don't expect the performance to be a huge jump with that, but nonetheless, there probably would be a little bit. Hard disk utility, this is kind of nice. This is a good thing to run on these older hard drives occasionally, the uh, hard disk format, this little low-level format to drive. Well, it's not a true low-level format in a sense, but it's pretty close. Um, this is good to run on these older drives. You know, It helps to uh, uh, repair some weak sectors and things like that that can do develop. Uh, it's pretty handy. I've, I've been able to extend the life of certain drives with that, but uh, I rarely have ever had to use it. And it's only available on some of these older AMI BIOSes. Some of them don't have that, so the boards that do come in very handy. So we'll go ahead and get this thing booted up here, and we'll do a little bit of gaming. Now, normally I would run Descent. I run Descent every video I get, but I think we know what Descent looks like by now. It's going to run about the same on this system as it does on 46s and other Pentium 60s. It's it's alright. It works good. It's, it's playable. But uh, for this particular video, I'm going to run Mega Race. And uh, I'm just going to run it in full detail um, just because it's easier to push <laughs> Enter than it is to push 1. Now, it's just Give it the full wally here. Uh, no sound, no no sound card plugged up to it. But um, you can see it's not not playing back too bad here. I'm capturing at 30 frames per second, 640, 480, and uh, it's not doing too bad. It's about what it runs like on a 46. And you got the nice Mega Race 2 logo flying at you there. I kind of like this game. One of these days, I'm going to have to find the full version of this game instead of running the demo of it. And of course we've got Lance Boyle here telling us about how great Mega Race 2 is and how cool it is. It's kind of like a used car salesman there, a little little shady. and then uh, Or maybe a pimp actually since he's bringing out this nice little blonde model here, the little Miss Universe looking model thing going on here. Isn't she a dream doll or whatever he says there? Yeah, yeah, she's alright. She's, she's playing a ditzy blonde role there. She plays it pretty good. 
Miss Universe or Miss Mega Race, I guess, there. Even losers can play it. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. This is all running off the hard drive, too, by the way. There's no CD-ROM plugged up to the system. Not a chance, Lance. Okay, let's skip that. Maybe one day I'll do a video on this game. If I can find a full ver full version, maybe I'll do a uh, video on this game. But the demo version is plenty good enough. All right, let's go here. Come on, come on, come on. Let's get him here. Yeah. We'll fire a rocket at him here. Yeah. Get this jerk out of my way here. It, uh, you know, even though this is the not recommended settings, which would be the highest, it, it runs just fine on this. It's definitely playable. I've never really had a desire to, um, play more than just this first level on the demo. I've never been able to figure out what the key is to exit this game, so I just control alt delete <laughs> when I'm done playing it. But as you can see, it, it runs fine. This is about what it runs like on a 46, so, you know. Something different. Something definitely different to uh, play on a system. Do a video about, but yeah. Oh, we got a chance here. Let's catch up against these guys. Yeah, get, get ahead of these guys a little bit here. Oh, now we're now he's ramming me into the wall here. Yeah, come on, come on. Go, 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 go. Man. Usually half of these guys duck off to another area of the map, but they didn't do that this time. Well, now we got through the mess a little bit there. That guy's getting ready to blow up. He's getting a little darker there. Thankfully, they haven't hit me with any bomb bombs yet, missiles or whatever. I could drop an oil slick, but I don't feel like it. It takes a lot of missiles to blow these guys up in front of you, so I don't even really worry about it. I just try to pass them when I can. Of course, you slide around this whole track. It's kind of like almost playing little Hot Wheels cars, really, the way they look. In fact, I'd swear I used to have a Hot Wheels car that kind of looked like the one I'm driving right now. But, yep, yeah, see, now we got to first place here. Look at that. Just cut those turns as much as we can here. Yeah. That's right. I don't think I'm going to go all six laps on this game, but you get the idea. You know, even on a, even on this, we can win. Look at that. Even on this system, the settings, it's not quite optimized for this particular performance level of computer. We're still doing just fine on this. Yeah, this game actually has really nice... Uh, textures and visuals and stuff like that. 3D visuals for being that it's just running in 2D DOS mode here. We're not running any 3D acceleration here. It uh, actually looks it looks pretty good for the time. Pretty impressive, actually, given the era, because there's a lot of games that didn't look this good that were racing games. Interstate 76. I love Interstate 76, but it didn't look this good. <coughs> Yee. But yeah, anyway, you get the idea. So overall, this is a interesting platform to run a Pentium 60 or even a 46 on for that matter being a dual socket system there's obviously the upgrade path available which is kind of interesting well now we've seen what this board is actually like and I have to say it's not very good it, it's okay it, it does the job it seems to be a stable board it seems like it would be a board that you could buy if you wanted to upgrade later to the Pentium processor 
you probably wouldn't have bought a 46 to upgrade to a Pentium 60 later, but I don't know. It's kind of strange era with the way they were doing these upgrade path stuff, but it also is kind of interesting though that you can have a 46 and a Pentium chip exist on the same board. Which makes me think there's actually a lot of electrical similarities anyway between the 386, the 46, and the Pentium chips. Because I have the dual board that has a 386 and 46 on it, this board that has 46 and socket 4 Pentium 60s, and I have another board that has socket 4 and socket 5 on it. So there's definitely something there to those chips. They must be there must be a lot of similarities between those chips that they can coexist on the same motherboards, basically. In theory, you probably could just go from a 386 to a Pentium socket 5 on the same board, I'm guessing, but I'm not really sure about that, if you could, could or not. But it's rather interesting, and High Treason has an adapter that will adapt from socket 4 to 5. I think that's what that adapter is. And it's basically the same thing as the other board that I have, where it's got socket 4 and socket 5 on the same board. That board, again, does not work. I don't know if I'm missing a voltage regulator or what. There's a card that the manual that I found online shows it plugs into the socket 4 when you're using a socket 5, but I don't know if there's another one that exists for the socket 4 chip. I don't know. I haven't been able to get the board to post anyway. And it doesn't seem like... It, I, there's no acid damage on the board. I don't think it has a... Uh, one of those uh, leaky batteries. But anyway, I might talk about that board in another video if I can get it working or maybe I'll just showcase it off. But uh, I'd have to dig it out too. But anyway, yeah, this this isn't the greatest board in the world. But it is unique. Pentium, VLB. I have another VLB Socket 4 motherboard though that I'm going to do a video about. Its performance is better. And it is running a 64-bit memory bus because it does require two memory sticks in order for it to work. But that's for another video. And we'll get this video ended right now. So thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you again right here on the Wayback Tech Channel. Peace out, everyone.